Now then crew, and welcome back to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel. Behind me here is one of the two roof tents made by Howling Moon uh, that I purchased back in the UK some probably about 14 years ago. And they were purchased for a trip across Europe. Uh, and further afield, but that bit never happened. Uh, the trip across Europe was about three weeks long and we slept every single night in these roof tents. Then we came to New Zealand and thought, hey, we've got roof tents, we can go camping and all sorts of stuff. We used them once whilst we were here in New Zealand and then they got, well, put under houses, put in sheds, just basically neglected and never used. Uh, and now I thought, whoa, I've got a trip coming up on the DR200. I've got roof tents. Let's stick one on the ute and use that. Perfect. So I pulled it out. We took the cover off. The cover was all damaged by the sunshine because this one's been outside for about two years behind the house. I know it's terrible. It should have been in a shed, to be honest, but it's so big and there's no space. And it was covered in mold and spiders and ants and all sorts of nasty stuff. Anyway, Mrs. Mechanic spent absolutely ages giving it a clean. She's cleaned the outside so far. Uh, the fly sheet's currently getting washed and then she's gonna clean the inside. But when we op opened the tent out and I gave it a bit of an inspection, uh, much to my horror, I found that the base of the roof tent, the two boards have gone very, very rotten. Uh, to the point where really the tent isn't even usable in its current state. So let me show you the problem and then I'll show you roughly how I think I'm going to be able to fix it. I don't know how well this video is going to work out. It may not even ever go on the channel. Here we go. So, you know, at first appearance, apart from a bit of black mold and stuff that will scrub off, it, it doesn't look too bad. It's it's actually quite comfortable. There is a, there's a mattress that goes on the floor here, uh, which is outside gonna get cleaned as well. But the problem is with this base, I mean, I just pull this back. I first noticed that the aluminium surround had come loose on the base. And of course, that's what connects the tent to the base, pretty important. If I try and flex it down, hopefully you can see in there, it's, uh, if I put the torch on, hang on. I can do that, so there you go, look, it really is extremely manky. Now, there are, I've taken the screws out, there are some screws, some like um, about inch long screws, 25 mil, that are supposed to screw into that board. It's obviously a composite board, it's got aluminium on the top, it's got something in the middle, which I assume is wood, and then down here it's got some more of that aluminium. So, I need to try and replicate that. It is Christmas time, and there's very limited supply of stuff. So, all I managed to get hold of was some plywood, and I couldn't even get the right thickness. Uh, the thickness of this board, including the two pieces of aluminium, is 21.88 millimeters, and that's critical, because it's got to fit into this groove. That actually goes over the outside. Uh, it's a bit, of, a bit of channel, maybe you can see that in there, look. Actually fits inside. So, all I could get was 9mm ply. So two nines sandwiched together gives us 18mm. And I'm hoping, I really am hoping, to be able to salvage one of these aluminium sheets, which will go on the outside, it'll go underneath. So the inside will just be bare plywood. And at least that way, you know, it's going to stop some of the moisture coming up into the tent. I'm not too concerned about having, you know, bare timber on the inside. There's a mattress to go down anyway. It might be quite nice to have wood, actually. Um, now, this is treated ply, so the rainwater shouldn't affect it. It shouldn't start to rot, which is good, unlike that one. And um, but it still gets wet if it's exposed to water. Hence why I want to put the aluminium sheet on the underside. Because when it's all folded up, it's that bit that's facing the top. And there's a big cover to go over the whole thing anyway. And we've bought a new cover to go on it. So that should be okay. So where do we start? I was looking around and the tent itself is held to the aluminium frame via this... There's like a bead that runs inside. If I show you the underside here, 
it's a uh, you can see it here look so we've got a similar bead here and that's for the cover where the zip goes um, the zip piece slides into there with like a rubber insert and exactly the same for the tent now I don't really want to take the tent off this aluminium strip I foresee it being an absolute where's the focus damn you I see it being an absolute pain in the ass in all honesty so I'm going to attempt if possible to remove the timber from the aluminium frame but leave the frame connected to the tent I don't know if it's going to work or not to be honest it could be a catastrophe I might destroy what is uh, is it is it still usable well not really it's probably going to fall apart it's got four three and a half thousand four thousand kilometers to do around New Zealand the next few weeks and I think the vibration will just shake it to pieces oh well oh yes we got some more stuff here we go look so we got uh, a corking gun I have one couldn't find it so I've now got another one uh, we got some uh, plumber's silicon ex for exterior use because well it is actually outside so that's going to be useful I found that the, 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 the wooden base to the aluminium is silicon together so we'll be using some of that uh, I got some wood glue for exterior to be used when we glue the two pieces of ply together and of course a shed ton of screws to screw the ply together as well because obviously you know ideally I'd want one single sheet of ply but I've got to use two okay well is it still gonna be a tent by the end of today I don't know roll the intro They're already off. They all fell out yesterday. Oh, there's one. Yes, that was a win. this generation 
information. No idea. Don't need that. That's looking promising. Come back. Holy crap, holy crap, look at this, it's just, it's just rotten, wow, this is so much worse than I thought it was, the wood is absolutely knackered, look at that, it's just falling apart in my hands, oh god, yeah, so, poor bench made the right choice okay it's time now to cut out some of the new plywood the right size the easiest way of that is just lay it over the top of the ply clamp it down and just mark it cut it do it twice then we can glue it together with some screws while that's drying 
I've got all that old mastic, whatever they've used, on the inside of the aluminium rail to get out. Bugger. Forty mil. Forty mil for you, Sandy. plan on that. Man, this job would have been so much quicker if we'd been able to get a piece of plywood the right thickness and not have to join two pieces together. Bugger. Okay, it's over there drying. Let me show you. That's a lot of screws. Looks quite weird though, doesn't it? It's not often you screw a bit of wood together like that, but anyway. Uh, time check. It's 10 to 2, which means it's time for a cold one. And then I'll crack on. Uh, next job while that's drying is, yes, oh, hi Lily, uh, is to get rid of all this crap, scrape all that out the sides, and once I've done that, I can mark up, a bit of a tour of the workshop now, I can mark up the holes, oh look, that's what the wood should look like, look, 
Uh, there is some drillings on the side. Here's one, look. Oh, bear with me. There, down there, look. There's some little drillings that go in. And those are for, if we can see them from up here. Uh, let me get it on the bench and I'll show you. It doesn't get any lighter. Uh, yeah, here we go. Look, here's one. So, to hold windows open and things, we have these little aluminium tubes. Here, you see, which little metal spikes go in. So, these obviously protrude into the wood. So, I've got to mark those out and drill those. There's four. One there, look. and obviously on this side. One there, and then there's another one down there. It's the hottest part of the day. And the garage doors are shut. What the hell, they should be open. And they will be open as soon as I stop filming. Um, right, I'm gonna crack on. I've got all that goo to clean off. I might get Mrs. Mechanic to come give me a hand. Uh, we'll let the wood dry, and then I can give it a quick sand around the edges. And there's no reason why, after I've drilled those holes in the sides, we can't fit it looking pretty good and then I'll have to do it all over again for the other side seriously Andy still got that ponytail stop stealing my thunder desperate times <laughs> we're on the citrus export not my choice Tulga or Holly's actually anyway last bit it's got all the bits in it ah uh, so Good news, better news, and bad news. Good news, I managed to get the extrusion taken off from the tent itself. We've got that now, and I've managed to clean out all the gunge that was in the back there that glued it basically onto the base. Cool, didn't take as long as I thought. So, very happy with that. Better news, those little dowels that go into the uh, the base of the tent, these things, they just sort of fell out. They were supposed to be glued in, and of course the glue has expired, so I've got all four in a little tub. But it does mean that the holes now are exposed, and I can drill those after it's been fitted. No chance of getting it wrong. At an angle, obviously. And the drillings and the extrusion are angled, so it shouldn't be too hard to do. Um, the bad news. You know, I wanted to keep one of those metal surfaces off the original floor. It's too well bonded on. It wasn't too bad around the edges where the wood was rotten. Then I found that the middle part of it's full of polystyrene anyway, for insulation purposes. It's all bent. I'll show you. So I started over on this corner here. And I used a big flat screwdriver. You can see where I've been wedging it up. And it's just, when it gets to the polystyrene, it's really well bonded. And it'll take me ages to clear all that off, and it's it's getting a bit deformed, you know. So I'm not going to bother. <sighs> yes, yes, I know. I should have bought myself a nice piece of stainless steel sheet or something that I could have cut down and inserted in. I didn't, and everywhere was shut. All I could do was go to like your domestic sort of mitre ten or Bunnings, they call them over here, um, B and Q if you're in England, that kind of stuff. And they don't sell that kind of sheet metal. So it's not going to happen. So it's going to go back together with just the wood. But something else, you know, my failure is your gain. Is that the words? Um, if you've got a plan to do this yourself, then, you know, make sure you plan ahead a bit more than I did. And get a piece of sheet metal. Obviously not steel because it will rust, but maybe aluminium, aluminium, or ideally stainless, I suppose. Yeah. But I think it'll be just fine. It'll be all right. Okay, let's crack on. Now, because the timber's not quite as thick as it should be, it's only 18 mil and it ideally wants to be 21.8. There's a little bit of a gap onto the, onto the uh, extrusion, so I'm going to put the gap at the bottom. So at least it looks nice on the inside. Right, so some screws here. Staring 
photo Don't forget the way you look me in the eyes And I keep you in my heart And my heart is where you are I still think of you, I want you coming back I remember when we were staring at a photo Don't forget the way you look me in the eyes And I keep you in my heart And my heart is where you are I still think of you, I want you coming back Call me when you want, maybe I can take it away I mean what? The silicon is where the silicon needs to be, it's just, and it's gonna get squished. It doesn't matter what it looks like.
much deeper I'll shout There'll be no one I get closer Open up the sky for me When you say I'll be much deeper I'll shout Do that. <laughs> this is my dad's old tankard. He gave me it before he died. And his friends Pete and Penny gave it to him on his 21st, 21st birthday. I really like drinking for this tankard. I not, I, as a kid I used to have pints of milk in it with ice on a hot summer's day. Weird, but you know, I've kept hold of it and I really treasure it. Anyway, it's quarter past five. No, it's not. It's 17 minutes past five now because I had a retake. I welled up. Anyway. I've done one side, the other side is exactly the same process. Uh, the only difference is it has a couple of rails that screw underneath the actual uh, floor which are then used to mount the roof tent to the vehicle. So I'm going to crack on with that, I'm running out of time today, I'm going to crack on and get the other side done, there's no need to film any of that because you've seen me do the whole lot. Um, I might include fitting those rails, no I will, I'll include videoing fitting the rails it's a pretty simple measurement and you know screwing back into place uh, and then we need to make or basically we need to fit the roof tent to the vehicle don't know how much that i'm going to include in this video though let's find out won't we see you tomorrow
it was a long day yesterday and I didn't really do any filming at all. Uh, the second side is done and I did fit the rails and no, I didn't film it, my apologies, but it is a pretty simple measurement base that you can take from the original floor. So let's take a quick look around and see how it came out. Here we go. I don't think it turned out too bad, to be honest. Quite happy with it, really, the way it worked out. Yes. Oh, and the rails, which fit to... Hang on, I can show you that bit. Bear with me. Right, let's lift that. Lift that back up again. There we go, look, you can see that the rails are in position. And the old straps that used to hold the tent, that you put over the whole tent when you finished zipping it all together, uh, I just used some new ratchet straps and just use the same fasteners onto the, the wood. So we've got those as well at the end, just to strap everything together, which is pretty cool, because the old ones were absolutely shot. There we go, look, where's the torch? Yeah, so I think that the hardest part was getting the uh, the hinges put back on in the right position. Uh, but the aluminium strip at the back, the nearest one, sorry, already had the holes in it. Well, in fact, both sides already had one hole in for the brackets. It wasn't too bad to line up, and it seems to be working just fine. So, a relatively cheap fix all up. Um, obviously, you know, the sides are all are all siliconed in now nicely. Uh, I used some extra screws as well because one of the problems of using two layers of plywood is the screws are central and they were going in the middle between the two layers of plywood. So I used some slightly longer screws and a few more screws to try and help with that. But yeah, it turned out all right. It's given the, the old tent a whole new lease of life. Now, originally, I anticipated this whole job taking me up to this stage one full day. Obviously, filming, add an extra half day to it, and that's what it turned out to be. About a day and a half solid work with a bit of filming thrown in. Filming certainly slows things down quite a bit. Uh, and my apologies if I didn't cover every single aspect of doing this job. It's just the way it is you know I need to crack on I've only got a certain amount of time available now obviously the next step is to mount the roof tent to the vehicle and that's not really part of a restoration project on a tent or fixing it basically it's not really a full restoration is it just fixing the base um, but very quickly this is what I had to do to mount this tent to the ute in question first thing to do is to do a drawing so let me show you that. So first of all, I wanted to know how big the tent was around its base. And this includes with the tent fitted, so it's slightly wider than the actual wooden base itself. So it's 1440 by 1260, and the ladder's in this orientation. And that's critical, because obviously you want the ladder, I wanted the ladder to be off when it's down, to be off to the curb side, which in this country is the left side of the vehicle, because we're right-hand drive here. And also the measurements of the rails. The rails are 1390 long, and the center line between each of the two rails is 820 mil. But that's only specific, I imagine, to the uh, the Howling Moon roof tents. And it might also vary depending on the size of the tent that you buy. I don't know. Um, this is a, a rough drawing of the ute, and the tent's going to fit on the tray. Now, I'd already made a few years ago some rails that went around. Uh, a, basically a, a rigid cover that goes over the tray it actually folds in three in, in two places it's got hinges um, but I'll, I'll leave it down all the time now so I've got these rails going around and I wanted to mount the roof tent to these two side rails so I had to come up with a plan now the these are box section rails that I'm going to be using and this is the joint between the box section and the rail on the roof tent and as you can see we've got some little outriggers here and then there's two bolts per intersection i suppose you'd call it so in total there's eight m8 bolts holding the roof tent down onto the vehicle which i think is more than adequate 
Uh, and that's a, an end elevation showing the bolts and the brackets and stuff. And this is, again is the rail that runs over the top. Uh, and the bolts, by the way, are captive. You slide the bolt in from one end of the rail with a 13 mil head and it, you don't have to hold up the spanner. It just locks into the rail. You just slide it to where you want. So there is some adjustment along that plane, which is good. And over here, um, I was just working out how long a piece of the box section I needed to overhang the two side rails that are around the tray. So 1540 was the length of the box section. Right, I'm going to need some brackets now to bolt it down to the ute. Excellent! They look like exactly like the brackets that I need. Let's use those. That saved me loads of time.
finally, after probably two full days of work, we've got it installed on the ute with the new cover and the Aerofast ratchet straps. They worked really, really well, actually. Very pleased with that. Looks very tidy. Question, would I do this again? Well, I think the answer is yes. I mean, it's cost, what's it cost? Timber and screws and glue and that kind of stuff probably came to about 350 New Zealand dollars. Uh, and then it needed a new cover anyway. A new cover was another 230, dare I say it, plus another 270 dollars freight to get it out of Australia to New Zealand. Uh, but can you count the freight? Not really. A new tent like this off the shelf, probably about 1500 New Zealand dollars at a guess. So much, much cheaper to fix the old one than it was to buy a new one. And buying a new one means a bit of a waste, isn't it? You know, I'd rather, much rather use an original tent that I've already bought and a tent that I paid a lot of money for and didn't really get a lot of use out of it. So this sort of gives it a second chance and sort of justifies the original purchase. Does that make any sense? Um, I'm sure as time progresses, if the other brands of tent also, you know, the roof tents that don't use treated timber, this is going to become an issue uh, for many, many people. There's a lot of these tents around now. And I think, you know, proving the fact that it's not that hard a job to replace the floor uh, and to give you your tent, uh, you know, another life is, uh, I think it's very valuable information. Uh, apologies if I didn't cover everything in the video, it would have been a massively long video otherwise, but uh, hopefully it's given you a good indication of what's involved, especially with the Howling Moon, Howling Moon tents, uh, but I'm sure that they're all constructed in a very similar way. I'm very happy, and uh, we've only got, well, we've got a day and a half left before we disembark on uh, an epic adventure. Uh, the full length of New Zealand, where I get to ride a DR200 farm special. Uh, between three and a half and four thousand kilometers from Cape Rianga all the way down to Bluff via gravel and tracks and all sorts of stuff. So I need somewhere to stay. And now I've got somewhere to stay. Okay, crew. Well, if you found this video helpful, why not click on subscribe, uh, ring the bell, and then that way YouTube will send you notifications as and when I upload any new videos. Uh, this was a very different kind of project to what I would normally do on the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel, but hey, it's a project and it's now done and I think it was important to bring you guys along on the journey. Uh, in some places I was a little bit outside my comfort zone but you know it, it is what it is. I did the very best I could given the materials that I had to hand uh, over the Christmas period to be honest because I didn't realize that we had a problem with the tent until I came to, uh, to, to pull it out and, and basically make a start making the rails to go across the ute which I did, I did those first by the way. Yes, took me about a day to work that one out and get them all painted up and, and bits and pieces. Um, if I'd done things differently, uh, and my suggestion to you is to make sure that you purchase a single sheet of plywood that's the right thickness. Me using two uh, thinner sheets and having to glue them together and screw them together massively include, uh, increased the amount of workload involved. And I think it would have made a better and tidier job with a single sheet rather than two glued together. So if you're going to do this job, definitely take the time to get all the right materials at the start. Uh, silicon around the outside to, to seal up that, uh, that aluminium frame which the tent sort of slots into, the bead on the tent. Uh, silicon probably wasn't the best solution. Maybe something like uh, no more nails, something with a bit more adhesion because I had to put some additional screws in there as well partly because of the two layers of timber the screws are going between the two uh, but also silicon wasn't that didn't have that much adhesion uh, properties or adhesive properties so you know something other than that something more of a, a glue based product I think would be a lot better to use uh, you'll also find me on Facebook Instagram and Twitter feel free to communicate through any of those portals You'll also find my email address down at the bottom. You can email me directly. Uh, I'm no, by no means an expert on resurrecting old roof tents. That's not what I do. I, this is a one-off project. I probably will never, ever do this again. Um, but, you know, I'll do my best to help. Now, if you'd like to support the channel, um, it's very important for us to 
you know have supporters otherwise projects like this just would not be possible uh, you can do that through patreon you can become a patron uh, or you can use paypal and sell, send a donation directly through the, the paypal uh, system on the PayPal side of it, it's just my same email address, andymechanic at live.co.uk, uh, and just do it as a donation. Okay, crew, well, until next time, thank you very much for watching, and um, I better crack on. See you around. Cheers. Over and out. And we get the up again. Oh. Thank <laughs> you.